The three Israeli hostages in Gaza made white flags to warn their own army not to shoot, smearing SOS in old food and writing in Hebrew, help three hostages. The Israeli military released the images overnight, saying the hostages were nonetheless mistakenly shot by Israeli troops. If you weren't already under the assumption that the IDF is acting erratically, irrationally, and is completely out of control, I think the latest story involving three Israeli hostages being gunned down and killed by the IDF should maybe change your mind, maybe, maybe. Now the IDF has finally fessed up to accidentally killing three Israeli hostages in Gaza. But could this accident have been avoided? Let's watch. Israel's chief of staff told soldiers the friendly fire could have been avoided, saying the hostages took off their shirts so that no one would think they have an explosive device and held a white cloth on a pole to identify themselves. They came speaking Hebrew, calling for help, he said, telling the troops never to shoot anyone with their hands up. Now, just to give you some more information on the hostages, according to the Washington Post, the hostages, all of whom were civilians, probably had either escaped or were abandoned by their captors before they tried to make their way toward an Israel Defense Forces position in the Gaza City neighborhood of Sejaya on Friday, according to the official who spoke on the condition of anonymity in line with the rules of the briefing. They emerged tens of meters from the Israeli troops, from where the Israeli troops were stationed, he said. They were all without shirts and they have a stick with a white cloth on it, the official explained, adding that a soldier felt threatened and opened fire. Now the IDF has identified the three hostages that they have slaughtered as Yotam Haim and Alon Shamris of Kibbutz Kafar Aza and Samer Al Tala Laka of Kibbutz near Am. Now, two of the hostages were killed immediately when the soldier opened fire Friday, the military official said, while one was injured and ran inside a building. As soldiers entered it, a cry for help was heard in Hebrew, and the battalion commander issued an order to cease fire, the official said. But there was another burst of fire, and the third hostage was killed. So we've been hearing from you know Hamas, which you should not take at face value that the aerial bombardments that the IDF has been conducting in the Gaza Strip has killed other hostages. And when you consider just the out of control nature of the IDF, it isn't that hard to believe. Obviously, we don't have evidence of what Hamas is saying, which is why you should take it at face value. But keep in mind, we're now talking about three hostages, Israeli hostages that the IDF has fessed up to killing, slaughtering, even though they were holding white flags, even though they were not wearing shirts. You can't argue that they might be suicide bombers. They're not wearing shirts. Anyway, Jane. Yeah. So uh, Israel uh, kills civilians at a much greater rate than Hamas does. Uh, and I'm going to give you the numbers in a second. Uh, but they say, no, it's okay. Uh, they're uh, no good terrorists, but we are heavenly, wonderful uh, democracy. Uh, why? Because they say they intend to kill civilians. We do not intend to kill civilians, we just are the worst military in the world. We just accidentally killed 20 times the number of civilians that Hamas, a terrorist group, trying to kill civilians kills. But it's always an accident. Well, okay, well, now these three folks that were hostages, what could they have done to have not gotten killed? Because their shirts were off, so obviously, again, as Anna said, no suicide bombing. They're speaking Hebrew, they have a white flag, SOS. But imagine how many Palestinians they killed that did not get any kind of attention like this, because they're apparently mowing down everyone. By the way, other former IDF soldiers have formed a group called Breaking the Silence, where they explain, yeah, once we they drop leaflets, they consider everyone in that area a, a fire free zone, meaning fire at will, okay? So there's not like, so that we're all, the whole world is talking about it because it's three Israeli hostages. But that happens to Palestinians every single day, 
and no one ever asks a question, are they Hamas, not Hamas? And well, then, you're an anti-Semite if you ask that question, Jank. How dare you? Yeah. How dare you ask that question? How dare you give a damn about the children who are being slaughtered at the hands of the IDF with the bombs that we supply them? Because if you do care about that, you're obviously anti-Semitic. It's anti-Semitic to give a damn about innocent civilians who literally have nowhere to go, nowhere to escape to, to flee for safety. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, that's but okay. I'm sick of the same conversation over and over again. 100%, in fact, that's what I was gonna, one of the things I was gonna get to. So I've been having a lot of debates about Israel all over media recently. But I'm tired of the debates because it's like debating with folks who are just in a completely different reality. So Hamas killed 36 kids. Uh, when they attacked Israel, and we condemn that, and that's terrible and awful. And you, and you know, people are uh, you now Jen Psaki's crying about uh, Israeli kids just over the weekend, and that makes sense. And 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 I feel terrible for those kids. Thirty six kids. Now Israel has killed nine thousand Palestinian kids. So, who's the terrorist? So if you're saying, oh no no, Israel just happens to kill everyone in their path. But it's all an accident. You might not realize it, but you sound ridiculous. No one outside of the hardcore Israeli or right wing position believes that. We all think you sound insane. No, you're obviously trying to kill the civilians. 45% of the bombs that the IDF is using in the Gaza Strip, a densely populated strip of land. Consist of what's referred to as dumb bombs, unguided munitions, meaning that they're not precise, they're not accurate, using them in an area that is not as densely populated as Gaza is dangerous because you're going to very likely kill all sorts of innocent civilians who are nearby. In the case of Gaza, which is even more densely populated, it's an even bigger issue. It means more civilians are gonna die. And you know what's so interesting about this? The United States government reads this report about 45% of the bombs being used by the IDF being dumb bombs. And they're like, we don't get it. Why are they using these dumb bombs? We're supplying them with precision guided munitions. Really, you're gonna pretend like you don't know why they're using dumb bombs, even though they have other bombs that they can use that are a little more direct, a little more precise. Are we gonna keep having and rehashing the same conversation over and over again? Let's just keep it real. According to the United States government and its unwavering, undying devotion to Israel, the lives of those Palestinian kids just don't matter. That's a fact. It is. You, Actions speak louder say, than words. If you say 36 kids dying breaks your heart, but 9,000 kids dying doesn't, and then you give a green light and want to send them 14 billion extra dollars to murder more Palestinian kids. You are by definition saying, I don't care about those kids. 9,000 Palestinian children murdered, who cares? I don't care. All we need is plausible deniability. Oh, We didn't mean to kill 9,000 children. Okay, more facts, we dropped 2,000 pound bomb or Israel drops 2,000 pound bombs. That's four times bigger than any bomb that America dropped in Iraq in a residential area. We thought anything beyond 500 pounds is a war crime. There are 2,000 pounds. Half their bombs are unguided, meaning ah, who cares, just drop it. And then now you see with the hostage situation, shoot at will, don't ask any questions, just kill them all. And then pretend that it's not our policy. Oh my God, every soldier there accidentally had the wrong policy. Every bomb accidentally fell on civilians. So I'll give you one last fact. So Hamas killed 846 civilians on October 7th, outrage, terrible, horrific. Now, even if you believe IDF's numbers, which are comically false and total propaganda, but let's give them the benefit of the complete benefit of the doubt. 5,000, they say, were Hamas fighters, absurd. They've never shown any evidence of it. Okay, 19,000 killed overall, so 14,000 civilians at a minimum killed in Gaza. So that's 16 times the number of civilians killed by, from, by Israel over Hamas. So that makes Israel 16 times as guilty. All of those bombs and all those bullets are acts of terrorism. And you can pretend all you like, no, Palestinian lives don't matter. None of them are civilians. We should just kill them all, murder them all. But I'm the good guy. Well, okay, but no one believes you. And we all have eyes, guys. Everyone in the world is watching what's happening in Gaza. 
the people, families being removed limb by limb from the rubble. Over 90% of Gazans are now homeless because they've turned Gaza into the biggest war zone that anyone has ever seen. And that is what every human rights group is saying now. The worst war zone we have ever seen. They're butchering the civilians and pretending to be the good guys. The only people who believe any of that crap is people who listen to Israeli propaganda. Now, how do Israelis feel about the fact that their military decided to gun down three of the hostages that they're purportedly trying to save in the Gaza Strip? Well, why don't we hear from them? I don't wanna put words in their mouths, let's watch. The families of hostages still in Gaza are outraged, calling daily for Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to resume negotiations with Hamas and bring their loved ones home. I am angry that the government let this get, let this situation get so far. I am angry at the world that is not supporting Adi right now because this is the only way to bring them back home. And I am angry at, right now I'm angry at all. Opinion polls suggest Israelis remain united in their support for the war in Gaza to destroy Hamas, but not in Prime Minister Netanyahu's leadership. And guess what? Netanyahu, unlike others in his government who were willing to apologize and take responsibility for what happened to those three hostages, he refused. It took him a while to even acknowledge it. Speaking only hours after the army admitted to shooting three Israeli hostages as they held up a white flag in Gaza, fueling consternation and anger among Israelis, Netanyahu appeared to be trying to change the subject, boasting that he had prevented the creation of a Palestinian state in the past and would continue to do so. By the way, let's not forget how he prevented that from happening. He prevented that from happening by funding and propping up Hamas, he did that. Okay, so the terrorists who crossed into Israel and slaughtered those innocent civilians, they were individuals who were funded and empowered by the sitting prime minister of Israel. That is what happened. Let me just give you one quote from Netanyahu. I'm proud that I prevented the establishment of a Palestinian state because today everybody understands what the Palestinian state could have been. Now that we've seen the little Palestinian state in Gaza, Everyone understands what would have happened if we had capitulated to international pressures and enabled a state like that on the West Bank. But remember, he is the one who propped up Hamas. I have the evidence in front of me right now in March of 2019, he told his Likud party members the following, anyone who wants to thwart the establishment of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas and transferring money to Hamas. This is part of our strategy to isolate the Palestinians in Gaza from the Palestinians in the West Bank. And you know, there are other politicians within Israel who spoke out against what Netanyahu was doing at the time. We can get to that as well if you'd like, but make no mistake, Hamas is a Netanyahu project, funded and propped up by Netanyahu himself. So look at all the obvious hypocrisy if you just pierce the veil of propaganda. So America says, well, we can't, they have to keep bombing Gaza because they have to kill everyone in Hamas. And and then we will have victory. Why? And we, how you can't have a peace deal, obviously, because how can you negotiate with evil? Hamas is so, so, so evil. The people who murdered 14 times as many civilians, not evil by the way. But Hamas is super evil for the amount of people that they killed. So uh, that's why we have no partner for peace and we can't have peace. Well, Netanyahu is bragging openly about how he doesn't want peace and doesn't want a two state solution and will prevent has, has prevented it in the past and is going to continue to prevent it. So obviously, he's not a partner for peace. Do we get the same criticism of Netanyahu from the US government? Absolutely not. The beloved Netanyahu and they crawl around his feet. So Biden pretends and his whole administration, oh, we're holding their feet to the fire. No, you're licking his feet. I'm sorry, it's a gross thing, but that's exactly what they're doing. So wait, who's giving who money here? This doesn't make any, so they say, we're gonna give you the 14 billion. Why do they need 14 billion more dollars to murder more Palestinians? Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty good at murdering Palestinians. I don't think they need any extra, does it look like they need extra money to kill more Palestinian civilians? Okay, so, but Biden says, well, you know, I'm being tough on them behind no, the he's scenes. he's not, he's not. And, and, <laughs> he's and not. meanwhile though, he says, send them the 14 billion dollars with no limitations. 
Why no limitations? It's our money. Why can't we put any limits on it? No, who's the boss of who? Look, guys, I get it. There's old anti-Semitic tropes about how Jews control the world, etc. That's nonsense. It's not true, okay? But in this country, we have organized, legalized bribery. So lobbyists can simply buy any politician they like. And it's not just Israel. Other countries do it. Certainly industries do it, like the oil companies, the defense contractors, etc. But it is just not true to say that Israel does not have influence over US politicians. It's not within a million miles of truth. They spend a tremendous amount of money in our politics. And so it's not surprising that our politicians say two thirds of Americans want a ceasefire. We don't give a damn about the voters. Where's the money? Where's the money? I question, I will never question Israel. I will never question them. That's what Biden says. That's what John Fetterman says. That's what 90% of Congress says. Why do we, we're not allowed to question people committing 14 times as many war crimes as Hamas. We're not allowed to question the people we're spending, sending $14 billion to. No, they should get zero dollars when their leader says, I don't want peace. All I want is murder and, and terrorism that is 10, 20 times worse than Hamas. So no, that is not an ally, that is not a democracy. And, I, and every day that another dollar from all of us goes to them is a day when America is complicit in those war crimes and complicit in killing those 9,000 Palestinian children. Final thing I'll say is, you know, CNN's reporting on this issue has been mixed, but they do have these bright spots where they do incredible reporting. And what I appreciate is when they draw attention to specific people and what they've experienced as a result of this ongoing war. And they profiled this one young Palestinian girl who suffered from three separate airstrikes. The first one wiped out her family, she lost both of her parents. Second airstrike, she lost her limbs, she lost her legs. Third airstrike, she lost her life. You have a population of people who are trapped in a small strip of land waiting for the day they're gonna die. And that is the kind of life they're living because of Israel and because of our financial and military support to Israel. And I feel so much shame in knowing that I live in a country that has a government that allows this to happen. And even though I would change things if I could unilaterally, all I can do is ask for forgiveness from the international community. This is not representative of most Americans. This is not what most Americans want. Unfortunately, we have a government that is fully corrupted by one of the most powerful lobbying groups in the country. And as a result, they'll give us the middle finger as they continue to fund and provide bombs to a military that doesn't care about human life at all in the Gaza Strip, including the lives of their own citizens, Israeli hostages.